At the Financial Sector Conduct Authority has slapped Marcus Yuster with the biggest penalty in SA history. The former Steinhoff CEO has been fined 122 million rands for insider trading. FSCA says Yuster shared insider information on a warning SMS encouraging four individuals close to him to dispose of their Steinhoff shares. Three individuals acted on the information. The authority has clarified that Yuster himself did not benefit from the insider training but has been fined as what it calls a tipper. Yuster is also jointly liable for 38 million rands should two of the other recipients not pay their penalties. The FSCA says this is the biggest fine they could have imposed in this case. All right, for more on disgraced former Steinhoff CEO Marcus Yuster's hefty fine, I'm joined by our business editor, Kolani Mbanjwa. Kolani, it did not start here. In fact, it started about three years ago. How did we get here? How did we get to the biggest fine in South Africa being imposed on a former CEO? Well, Unati, as we all know, it was uh, December 5th, uh, 2017, that the news reverberated around the world that one of South Africa's biggest companies, Steinhoff, was actually tumbling in the stock markets uh, abroad and here at home. And we have a look at this information. When it comes to that particular time, it was operating in over 30 countries, over 6,000 retail stores, and it had over 90,000 employees. When we move over to more of the information, but in, on the 5th of uh, December, news that the executives overstated the profits of, uh, uh, and assets of uh, Steinhoff by $12 billion, uh, leading the company to, to lose about 116 billion rands. Those, that was the big day when it comes to uh, Steinhoff and the death of Steinhoff as we usually uh, know it. It was a company that actually had a lot of assets uh, around the world in the UK and the US, making major acquisitions between the um, year 2000 and up until that very last moment in December. And um, in, on the 6th of December, we saw that CEO Marcus Huster uh, resigned just a day later. And of course, uh, uh, the chairman, Christoph Visser, also quit on the 14th of December. Now, since then, developments obviously happening today. Talk us through exactly about the significance of today's events. It is a very, very significant one, uh, Unati, that uh, the Financial Sector Conduct Authority imposes this particular fine. Uh, it is divided in a number of sectors, uh, you know, when it comes to the law of insider trading. It is built in such a way that uh, the, those who are in positions of authority are actually deterred from actually making insider information known to anyone outside of the company, giving them unfair advantage in stock trading. And that is exactly what Steinhoff uh, CEO, former Steinhoff CEO, uh, Marcus Huster did to four or more of his friends. And when we look um, on the 30th of November, just uh, five days before that fateful day, Marcus Huster sends a warning SMS to four of his friends, uh, you know, is telling them that uh, they need to dispose of their shares when it comes to Steinhoff. The writing was on the wall for him as the CEO. He knew what was coming, so he had information that he knew would be divulged on the 5th of December. And that's why um, when uh, he actually shared that information, it is inside information. And when we move on uh, to those particular individuals, um, those uh, were Yap Dutoit, who was at uh, PSG at the time, a very, very huge investment company, and uh, Dr. Gerhaldas de Dix Berger, an acquaintance of his, a friend of his, uh, who also has had uh, shares on Steinhoff, Martinas Switzerlach, uh, uh, he was a driver of Marcus Juste, and uh, he actually also sent the same SMS to him, and Oki Ostezen, he is now late, and uh, he was um, uh, the head of Oscan Investments. He sent uh, these uh, uh, gentlemen, uh, and the FSCA is, is uh, saying there are more that they are investigating, and this was the point of insider information. Information. And when we move on, we will see that um, the FSCA uh, today, when it comes to Marcus Yuste, this is a 161 million rand uh, fine. It is actually multiplied three times because 
they are trying to deter insider trading. So when it comes to the losses that were avoided by that particular information, by those he shared the information with, they are multiplied three times to come to 161 million rand and of course the maximum penalty of disclosing inside information and you know um, uh, undisclosed costs uh, so the, the cost of the investigation of the FSCA are still going to be determined and he will have to foot that bill as well. Moving on to the friends now, Yap Dutoit never acted on the tip off and uh, therefore he's not going to be uh, facing any uh, censure moving on to uh, the next uh, do Dr. Gerhard just a burger, 3 million rand fine. This presents uh, twice the amount of losses that uh, Dr. Berger avoided. And when we move on to the next individual, Martinez Swirchelar, a chauffeur, he actually cooperated with the investigation and therefore he uh, actually gets a slap, on the, a slap on the wrist. And when it comes to that 18,328, the shares that he traded were much, much less. Moving on to the last individual, individual that is Uki Ostezen. He was at um, the head of Oscan Investments. He is now late. Basically the FSCA is saying that he lied to them during the investigation. They are not happy with uh, what uh, he actually told the FSCA beforehand and that is why uh, and he traded uh, quite a huge amount on Steinhoff and that is why that particular uh, fine is at 115 million rands, 867,122 rands. Of which Oscan is now the company responsible for 77 million rands and uh, that uh, 38 million rand will be shared between the two. And in, and in fact, um, that SMS that he sent, I mean, uh, in, in recent reports, we heard that he said Steinhoff is going to struggle to process all the bad news in America for a long time, so there are better places to invest your money immediately, take the current price and delete this SMS and don't call anyone. Now, I mean, insider trading, trading, as we know, is one of the worst crimes you can commit in the business industry. Just talk us a little bit about why it is so bad and why it's illegal to do. Uh, information is key. Information is money in the stock market. If you know that company A is going to uh, procure company B and you want to, uh, you actually know that information, uh, it's obviously going to make that company's assets bigger. If you know that information beforehand and it is shared with you and it's not information that is supposed to be shared, therefore that information is unfair uh, advantage uh, to you as that particular trader. You are not, according to the FSCA, supposed to act on any information, insider information, because it, it, it is unfair. It does not allow for a, a level playing field. And Unati, as you have seen in some of the motion pictures around the world, like the Wolf of Wall Street, uh, these things uh, actually uh, make sure that uh, money is lost. So when it came to this particular one, uh, Marcus Eustia and some of the executives, uh, basically the allegations that they colluded in lying about the assets, how much the company was worth and therefore went and overstated those particular profits. So if you are an investor, then you are actually putting money into a company that is now uh, not even worth the paper it's written on, which is exactly what happened, which is why today there are multi-billion rand lawsuits that are being, uh, you know, lodged, that have been lodged really against Steinhoff. And we know how the Wolf of Wall Street ended up. So is this the end of the road for Yosta? Absolutely not, Unati. This is not the end of the road for Uste. I spoke to Brendan Topam, the divisional executive for enforcement at uh, the FSCA earlier on. He says there are two parts of the investigation. The first part has been done, and when it comes to the fine against Steinhoff, that fine has been agreed upon, and now they are going to move on to the individuals. This part is about insider information alone. And he says that they want to move to a point where it's not just a civil litigation where money is sought uh, from individuals, but rather criminal investigations that actually lead to, you know, um, what you call, uh, you know, prison time. Now the hawks are actually investigating. We spoke to them last week and they said their investigation is continuing apace and they will have information in no time for us. So this is definitely not the end for Marcus Yuste. And uh, there are four other 
accounts that actually traded at a very high pace in the days leading to that fall and they're actually investigating those as well and remember if they were found to have acted on insider information Marcus Huste will actually be liable for that particular uh, uh, one as well and let's hear let, let's take a listen to what Brandon Topham had to say earlier on but what's important to note here, yeah, for instance, in the case of Mr. Yester, he never traded, right? He just shared information. He didn't benefit one cent uh, other than helping out somebody that, that he wanted to potentially help. And for that, just send in a simple SMS. Uh, we've, he's potentially on the hook for 161 million. So I, I hope that that would be a deterrent to other insiders. It is my view, regardless of, of anything else that it will be very difficult for most chief executive officers or chief financial officers to argue at any point in, uh, in a year that they don't have a specific inside information. Um, so they must be extremely careful when, when doing that. And the public, if you act on that information, you must understand, but even if you act for a small amount of 18,000 Rand or be it for 100, 100 million or so, we, you know, we look at them all, all the same. And um, the other very important lesson here is that, you know, you, you don't escape. It might take a bit of time to, to get the evidence together and the proof, et cetera. But, but you know, we will, we will finish our investigation one way or the other. Wow, riveting information indeed. One simple SMS, as we've heard in that clip, Tolani has cost uh, Marcus Yuster 122 million rands. One wonders, where is Marcus Yuster now? Well, that's anybody's guess, uh, Unati. He might be see, sitting in uh, uh, the Cape uh, there, you know, sipping uh, pina coladas in a Panama hat. He has actually been spotted around, you know, uh, the parts of Cape Town, but uh, it's anybody's guess where he is. But uh, definitely we will see uh, more of him in the coming months. All right. Thank you so much, Tolani, for that uh, analysis. Uh, more of your leading top stories when we return. Stay with us.